Australia and UK, which have been in existence since quite a long time now. And today, we will take this opportunity and let us have more detailed discussions on the further opportunities, what we would be seeing uh, in the years to come uh, with respect to Brexit. Uh, I would request all the members to take maximum benefit of this opportunity. Thank you. With it has uh, now talking about especially industrial ecosystem, uh, we, we, we have a reasonably good uh, uh, industrial ecosystem here with all kinds of facilities, hospitality facilities, healthcare facilities, etc. available here. And uh, therefore, uh, to be precise, you know, this is one of the education hubs of Maharashtra. Of course, uh, it's very well known, Pune, and uh, we don't know that uh, one of the basic reasons of Pune's growth, whether it is IT or industry, comes from is basic um, uh, in the, um, development of, as an as a, as a educational uh, destination. We do have here quite a few, I don't want to get into the details, but many, many engineering colleges and uh, healthcare universities. Uh, based on which we have a large SME base for completely supply chain. You know, there are quite a few large industries here that get support from a very good um, SME base here. And the logistics and auxiliary supports are excellent here. You have already seen very well connected to uh, all parts of India. And uh, there's very good base for R&D. There are some institutions here which uh, houses uh, state-of-the-art uh, laboratories to help you in your R&D activities. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, there's very good uh, educational base. Therefore, it's also uh, like uh, getting a skilled manpower is, is quite easy here. And the higher climate, uh, you know, like when you are in India, it's, I think, being a democratic country and with some kind of socialistic uh, past or at least uh, propensity to do that, industrial relation is very important. Formula One teams, uh, so racing drivers. Um, one of them, Red Bull Racing. Uh, I grew up about 200 meters away from their, their main R&D center in the UK. It's a fantastic place uh, for advanced uh, manufacturing automotive. Um, more generally in terms of the relationship with India, um, growing at 14% bilateral trade. People talk about Brexit, it was mentioned I think about two sentences in. Uh, we got through two sentences there talking about Brexit, but even through that time last year, bilateral trade between the UK and India grew by 14%. We're still a top five investor um, in each other's economies. So I think a really strong uh, relationship, but the world is changing. Um, I think at the most general level, India is going to be 18% of global GDP, GNP, by 2060. It's just a massive growth. It's the biggest, uh, or the fastest growing G20 economy, and it made the biggest, third biggest contribution to global growth this year. So it's just this huge uh, player on the world stage that, that, that we need to engage with, and that's why, why I and my colleagues are here. Um, Secondly, the world is changing. As, as already mentioned, uh, the UK is leaving the EU. We think it creates lots of opportunities, but it is a change. Um, and it does mean we need to engage with those partners who are further, uh, uh, further away, but a fantastic opportunity. And then more specifically to manufacturing, I was driving over here uh, yesterday um, and I was listening to a podcast, a McKinsey podcast, which talked about uh, how the manufacturing sector is uh, changing. And I think um, people sometimes have the impression that uh, uh, outsourcing uh, to, to, to other countries about price, and actually it talked about only less than 20% of um, outsourcing is, in, is now done on a price basis. It's more about partnerships, R&D together, jointly creating stuff. I think that's really important for, for, for how UK and India companies uh, 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 work together. So that changing world, how do we respond? Um, so the UK has an industrial strategy, India has an industrial strategy, but I think they both quite nicely summarise um, what the key challenges are that we have to address over the next couple of years. The first we, we, we define as ideas. So how do we make sure that our countries remain idea-generating, innovative countries? We've committed to 2.4% of our GDP being in R&D, and a lot of that will be in partnership with countries like India. Secondly, we need to invest in our people and continue to invest in our people. Um, we've uh, put 406 million into training people to ensure they're ready for the digital advanced manufacturing world. So we think people are really important. Third, we think infrastructure is massively important. We've put 1.4 billion into digital infrastructure. 
We also think the business environment is equally important. We can't claim uh, the same uh, sort of improvement as India, going from 130 to 77 in two years, but we are investing in the UK to make sure it's still a great place uh, to do business. And finally, and I think similar to uh, Nashik and other um, cities, we really want to invest in those places that aren't London in the UK. Uh, so we've created a £1.7 billion cities fund to make sure that all of the UK is growing as fast um, as London. So I think, I think that kind of talks about how we as the UK are trying to address those challenges and I think that mirrors uh, some of the challenges that, that, that India sees. Um, specifically to this area, um, when Prime Minister Modi visited the UK in 2018, um, we committed, as part of the package, uh, the tech partnership, um, we committed to a Maharashtra Midlands Engine um, partnership. So the Midlands Engine uh, in, in the UK is kind of Birmingham, everything left and right of Birmingham. Um, and that partnership is to look at one of the challenges that we see as key, which is future mobility, and how we jointly address uh, those challenges. This also comes in a broad, this commercial stuff and industrial stuff comes in a broader context of a, of a, of a, of a changing world. I'm not going to, I think, press her here. One man has uh, uh, admitted to it. Um, I'm not going to name countries, but the world is polarizing. Um, we think, or at least we see around free trade and protectionism. And I think the UK and India have such a strong, deep, a broad relationship that we can kind of ride those, those hurdles. We talk about the living bridge of people, ideas, and institutions. Uh, a crop between the UK and India that makes our relationship so broad and deep. People, ideas and institutions is one way I've heard of it. I've also heard of the five C's. Uh, so cricket, cinema, curry, commonwealth, commerce. Um, we have a broad, deep, important relationship. Um, you have just re-elected uh, Prime Minister Modi, uh, business reform. We're going to have a new Prime Minister in about 48 hours. Um, but both are committed, both of the candidates, at least on our side, are committed to India as a, as a, as a place to do business. So I think that's really important and it'd be silly to ignore it. Um, that's all I really wanted to say, except uh, me and my colleagues at uh, DIT and the British government are, are here to help. If you want to buy, invest or most importantly partner uh, with companies in the UK, please do reach out and get in touch. We are literally paid here not just to enjoy uh, the wine and uh, leisure of Nashik, but to help you uh, to do that. So I'm going to say that thank you very much for your time. Another place, like currently we're in Mumbai, or if you will be, when you go back to London, you know, you can enjoy this leisure uh, in the weekends or in the vacation. The difference here is that Nashik, we can do that every day, you know. Uh, where else can you go after office hours, enjoy a glass of wine and, and uh, watch the sunset? That's possible here. One of the reasons that I said, the main reason I'm here is mainly mainly because of that, you know, you get spoiled in a place like Nasik in terms of really work life. Uh, uh, most of uh, the people, entrepreneurs, employees, I think uh, uh, they live in within uh, less than five kilometers uh, of their workplace, you know, whether traders, whether uh, industrialists, and that's make life really, really different here. Some of us who also spend some time in, in big cities, uh, we know what it means and uh, yes, Nasik uh, hasn't grown like some of the other cities like Bangalore, Hyderabad, uh, Pune, uh, Chennai. I think that's not so bad because now we can learn from the experience of those cities and uh, fashion our growth in a way without sacrificing the quality of life or the environment. So that's why we are here, you know, we have an excellent ecosystem. We have quite a few government establishments, defense related and uh, R&D, and uh, there are many, many um, uh, test laboratories here. Uh, therefore, uh, large uh, OEMs like, uh, you know, that Mahindra is pro uh, probably the largest here, the auto, uh, automobile manufacturer, uh, people like ABB, Atlas, Copco, and big names are there. And uh, Siemens, I come from, from TDK here, and uh, these companies uh, get a uh, huge benefit from these SME ecosystems. We have about 275 plus. You, you wanted me to talk about the uh, major industries here and, and that's how it is here, electrical, electronic and switch gear. We have 275 plus companies. Of course, a hell lot of them are, 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 um, are small ones, but that's how they support the big ones here. And uh, as I mentioned, I was talking to you that Nasik 
in terms of farming is, is big and we have some 100 plus food processing industries. We do have plastic industries, of course now no one is, is very proud about talking about plastic industries, but it's a reality that you need it still. We have 1000 plus engineering SMEs, that is very important here, machine building, including uh, automation and, uh, are here and they are very, very competitive. And uh, there are some chemical industries here, but not a major one. We do have many pharma and healthcare units, big names are there like GSK uh, and uh, Glenmark, uh, uh, Mylon, but uh, they are supported by uh, many, many uh, small and medium enterprises. And what is important is that to keep up with the technological growth in the manufacturing sector, there are 30 plus automation units. I think a couple of uh, um, our friends who handle or who are in this business are, are also here. I think with that, uh, uh, welcome again and thank you. And uh, very eager to see uh, what you have to say here.